نحمده ونسلي على رسول النبي الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين إحنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير الماء ودوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين قال الله تعالى في شان حبيبي إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا سلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ولنا محمد ولا على سيدنا سيدنا ولنا محمد نبارك سلوا عليه سلاة وسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله continuing with the talk on Imam Hussein alayhi salam or with the topic of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. You know, last week we were talking about them being on the way and receiving the news of the murder or the martyrdom of Muslim bin Aqil as well as the messenger that Imam Hussein alayhi salam sent to Kufa uh, you know, along the way. And then the arrival of that first army of Yazid which was a thousand men uh, headed by Hur uh, and Hur being a decent person you know tried or, or treated Imam Hussein Islam cordially and they came up with the agreement that you know since they were headed to Kufa he would you know they would continue on their way towards Kufa and he would not arrest them Hur would not arrest them as he was ordered but simply walk alongside with them. And every Salat time, whenever Salat time would come, Hur would always pray Salat or make his Salat behind Imam Hussein alayhi salam. And as I mentioned also, you know, there were many people who had joined this caravan, you know, this, the group of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, but when the army started coming, most of these people started disappearing because you know the true test of what's in the heart is when difficulty comes you know everybody you know will do something good if there's some benefit in it. you know if you t start telling people that oh you know if you start coming and making salat here every Friday on time you know get here at at 12.45, listen to the talk and stay here until after we make salam and then go and we'll give you 2,000 bucks a person. I mean, we won't have any room here. But when they have to come here and leave their job, you know, or leave their shop, you know, and miss out on some worldly benefit that they think in their minds that they're getting some benefit, then, you know, we see what happens. So, you know, and this isn't new, this is something from the beginning. Uh, so, you know, it's habit to, oh, if I see something, if I see some benefit in it, I'm gonna run towards it. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is inviting us toward what is most beneficial. The only thing is that he has hidden the benefit in it. You know, the benefit in it is unseen to our eyes but it is what he has promised so we know it's true it's just we can't see it so we say ah oh, you know maybe then 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 the doubts start to form in the mind so same thing here you know in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran he says what you know, he says that well you know in surah Baqarah verse number 155 <laughs> من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين you know, that I will truly test you you will truly be tested with something of fear hunger loss of wealth loss of your lives loss of your offspring or just your offspring 
And then he says, وَبَشِّرِ well, الصَّابِرِينَ And glide tidings to those who are patient. Because when the test comes, the, when the difficulty comes, the real test is will you be patient? And in fact, when we look at these verses, we start off with verse 153. Allah says in that verse, Ya Inna Allah ma'as-sabirin. O you who believe, seek help through prayer and patience. And truly Allah is with those who are patient. You know, it's not when the test comes and suddenly I throw up my arms and say, Oh, am I the only one left for these difficulties? You know, if we look at ourselves, you know, difficulty comes and suddenly, you know, Our nerves are, 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 you know, are just all over the place. We can't focus, we can't think, because there's no patience. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises help for those who are patient. And not just help, He says glad tidings to those who are patient. And again in Surah An-Kabut, as we mentioned last time, you know, starting right at the beginning, Alif Lam Mim Ahasab an Nas wa Anyu Tarku an Yaqulu Amanna wa Hum La Yuftanun. That does mankind do they think that they can simply say, "Oh, we believe," and they won't be tested? Walaqad Walaqad Fatanna al Ladina Qab Walaqad Fatanna al Ladina Min Qablihim. Truly those before you were tested. Walaqad, you know, without a doubt, those who came before you were tested. Why? He also tells us why he tested. ladina <laughs> Sadaqu walayalamannal kadhibin. You know, to differentiate those who are truthful from those who are liars. And so if we claim to be truthful, then when the test comes, we should be patient. And if we're not truthful, then we are among the liars. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love the liars. And so when her comes, and you know, and the discussion takes place, and then they continue, and all these other people that have joined now start disappearing. As they continue, more armies come. Another army of a thousand men, army of three or four thousand men, they keep coming and joining in. And then on the second of Muharram, so if you remember, they left Mecca on the eighth of Zil Hajj. So on the second of the following month, which is Muharram, which is the first month of the Muslim calendar, they arrive at a place whose original name is Thaf. And at this place, you know, the armies now surround this group along with Imam Hussein you know, the 72 along with him and, and, he, and, those who, and the few handful that are left from those who had joined along the way. And so Imam Hussein al-Islam, he asked the person, what is this place? And the man, he tells him, he says that this is tough which the Rasulullah Sallallahu refers to as Thaf in the narration, but he also then refers to as Karbala, which is, a, which is the joining of two words, which means something, Bala is something bad or, or, or an omen. So the name takes its place from being an omen because this is where the blood of Imam Hussein will be spilled. 
And when so the man, he tells him that this is stuff. He tells him then we will stop here. We will not go any further from here. Because my grandfather told me that my martyr, my, the place of my martyrdom will be stuff. So he orders his people to pitch their tents. And then he has a ditch dug behind the tents of the women. And they put some wood in there and light it on fire because they don't want somebody coming from the back and attacking them. Because he knows who he's dealing with. You know, again, these are people who have no limits. And so, you know, in the meantime, all these armies are coming, one, you know, a few thousand at a time. And eventually we will get to 22,000. You know, some estimates say 30 or 4, 30 plus thousand. And some estimates maybe closer to 10,000. But most, roughly about 22,000 men. Against 72 plus. Because again, falsehood knows the strength of truth. In the meantime, what's happening is that there is a general in the army of Yazid called Amr bin Sa'd. He's the son of Sa'd bin Abi Waqas who, is one of, who was one of the very close companions of Rasulullah who was also one of the Ashra Mubashra, the ten who were given the glad tidings of paradise. If you look at the narrations in Sayyid Muslim that are the narrations in honor of Sayyidina Ali, Karamallah, most of them are through him or some way connected to him. This son of, of Saad, whose name is Amr, he had been assigned the governorship of what was known then as Ray, which is known today as Tehran. So that area he was going to be the governor of. And he was actually on his way to go and, and become the governor of this place when he received another letter from Yazid to go and assist Ibn Ziyad and, and to stop Imam Hussein at all costs. So he goes to Ibn Ziyad first and he tells him, look, you know, this isn't something I want to do, I want to... And so he's told at that point that if he does not fulfill this order, then the assignment will be taken back. He will no longer be the governor of Ray. So he says to him, he says, look, give me, you know, one night to at least think about it, and I'll tell you my answer in the morning. So he goes and he consults with his friends and relatives and every single one of them say, don't do this. I mean, this is the grandson of Rasulullah, so some you do not go against him. And his nephew came and he told him, he said, look, even if I was offered the world, you know, the command of the entire world, it would not be worth coming against the grandson of Rasulullah. So don't do this. So that night he had made up his mind that he was going to decline. And he goes to Ibn Ziyad the next day and he tells him, he says, look, you know, I can't really do this. So he says, then fine, hand over the paper. Hand over the orders that make you the governor of Ray. And then he looks at those papers and now his mind shifts. You know, he literally sells his soul for a few measly pennies. He says, no, then, then well, I can't do that, no, so I'll do this. So now he comes, and he's the commander of all of these forces now. You know, the 22,000 that have come against Imam Hussein al-Islam, he is the commander of all of those forces. 
this interesting about this son. There's a narration in Sayyid Muslim where if you look, and I'm going to come back and actually kind of shift here a little bit and just talk about Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu and the connection here with Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas radiallahu anhu. There, there's a narration in Sayyid Muslim narrated by Amir ibn Sa'ad. Not Amr, but Amir. You know, and that's where a lot of people get confused because many of the names are very similar. So the same, this is the son of the same Sahabi, the brother of Amr. He narrates that his, he heard from his father, his father was told him, that you know, during the time of Ma'abiyah, when he was the ruler, Sa'ad bin Abi Waqas was assigned as the governor of Medina Manoa. He later on would now shift to the out, outskirts of the city and, and live outside. But at that time he was assigned as the governor of Medina. And the leader of Banu Umayyah came to him, visiting Medina Manoa, and says to him, he says that, what stops you from abusing or cursing Ali? And he actually says, what stops you from cursing Abu Turab? Abu Turab is the name of Ali, the most beloved name of Ali. And we'll come back to this point too. So many points and we'll come back to as I go forward. So he says three things. And if I were given any one of these three, it would be more valuable to me than red camels, which is an Arabic expression of it would be more valuable to me than the whole world. He says, I heard Rasulullah Sussum say, you know, when Ali Radun was being left behind in, for the Battle of Tabuk, Rasulullah Sussum told him, look, you know, the hypocrites are, are gaining strength in Medina, so you stay behind and look after things while I'm gone. And so Ali Radun, he says to him, he says, Ya Rasulullah Sussum, you are leaving me behind with the women and the children. <coughs> You don't leave your greatest general behind when you're going into battle. Which also tells us the knowledge of Rasulullah Sussam because he knew that the Romans were not going to show up, that there would be no fight. So he says, Ya Rasulullah, you're leaving me behind with the women and the children. And the Rasulullah Sussam said to him, he says, is it not enough for you that you are to me like Aaron or Harun was to Moses? except there is no prophet after me. One. And he says, on the day of Khaybar, the Rasulullah Sussam said that I will hand the banner over to the one who loves Allah and his messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and is loved by Allah and his messenger, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he says, and we all wish that we were that one. Yet Rasulullah Sussam called Ali, and placed his blessed saliva because Ali Radun had his eyes were infected. So he placed his blessed saliva on the eyes of Ali and they were immediately cured and handed him the bat the banner. And number three, when the people of Najran, when the Christians of Najran came to debate with the Rasulullah and they lost the debate, but they still refused to accept. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Ali Imran, verse number 61, where he says, وَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدُوا أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسُنَا وَأَنفُسُكُمْ That call, call, tell them to call upon, that uh, call up, uh, we will call upon our sons and you call upon your sons and we call upon our women and you call upon our, your women and we call upon ourselves and you call upon yourselves. You know, for the mubahila, where each group comes and they say, oh, make a dua and say, oh, Allah, whoever is the liar, curse them. And he says, and uh, Rasulullah he called upon Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein. And then he says, after taking them in the cloak, he says what? He says, Allahumma ha'ulahi ahli. That Allah, only these are my family. 
You know, if you look at the grammar of, of the statement, I mean, if I translate it superficially, it simply means that, <coughs> oh Allah, these are my family. But if I look at the grammar of it, it actually means, oh Allah, only these are my family. And so he says, if I was given any one of these, it would be more to me than the entire world. <coughs> so this is what stops me from referring, uh, from, from abusing him. And then one of the leaders, Marwan of Banu Umayya, he asked somebody, oh, you know, what is this Abu Turab? You know, why don't you, uh, you know, they said it in a derogatory way. Abu Turab means father of dust. That's what it means. So somebody referred to Ali Radim in this way, trying to use it as a negative statement. And the companion, he said, there was no, there was no uh, name more beloved to Ali than Abu Turab. Because the Rasulullah Sallallahu himself gave it to him. So he said, how? So he said, one day Rasulullah Sallallahu went to the house of Ali, looking for Ali. And when he knocked on the door, Bibi Fatima, salamu la ilayha, she, the daughter of, da, da, of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, she answered and she says, you know, that he's not here. <coughs> Something happened, he didn't like it, so he left. So Rasulullah Sallallahu goes where to look for Ali? The masjid. He knew where he was anyway, but, you know, this, all of this is, is cause and effect so that we learn the lesson. So he goes and, and Ali Radim had laid down in the masjid and fallen asleep. And his mantle, his cloak had come off and the dust was hitting his back. And so all of this dust, you know, this, it wasn't masjid at that time like, you know, like the carpet here. The masjid at that time was a dirt floor. Later, some companions brought some gravel and laid it down so they wouldn't get muddy when they would prostrate. You know, the hadith of uh, where Rasulullah Sallallahu on the 25th night of Ramadan, he's prostrating and it had rained a little bit and the roof had leaked. And so, you know, he was prostrating in some mud. Uh, this is the king of the... Of, the one who Allah SWT sent as the king of the universe, prostrating in mud. And so Ali Radha had laid down and all this dust you know, was on him. On him. And Rasulullah is waking him up, knocking the dust off of him as he's saying, Wake up Abu Turab, wake up Abu Turab, wake up father of dust. And so this became the most beloved name because the name you love the most is the one that your beloved gives you. You know, why is Allah so loved to Allah? Why is the name of Allah, Allah? Why does Allah subhanahu wa prefer to be called by Allah? Because Allah in reality has no name. He needs no name. There is no name that can confine him. But why does he love this name? Because when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created all of the souls of creation, he asked them, he said, who am I? So this includes all the souls of all the prophets, the best of, of, of the creation. And no one steps forward or comes forward until finally the Rasulullah comes forward and bow, prostrates to Allah and he says, Antallah. In Arabic, Al, the, Ilah, deity, something to be worshipped. Antallah. You are Allah. You are Al-Ilah. You are the one to be worshipped. You are Allah. La ilaha illa an. And there is no one worthy of worship except you. 
So this is why the name of Allah is so beloved to Allah. Because the, His beloved gave it to Him. And who named Muhammad Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Other than Allah. So the name you love the most is the one your beloved gives to you. So Ali loved Abu Turab the most because Rasulullah gave it to him. But you can see how the propaganda and the po how the propaganda shifted the politics. So that among the companions, you know, Abu Bakr Bakilani who is the grand grand teacher of Imam Ghazali. In one of his books, Munaqib al-Aima al Arba, he mentions, he says, he says that among the companions of Rasulullah Ali Radiyam was considered Abzal. But among the Ahl Hadith, and at that time Ahl Hadith wasn't modern day Ahl Hadith. Ahl Hadith referred to those people who were of the Hadith, the, the, the true Muhaddithin even though they followed the madhab. Imam Bukhari was Shafi'i. Imam Muslim is Shafi'i. Even though Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal is one of the teachers of Imam Bukhari, but he's, Imam Bukhari is still Shafi'i. So they had their, their methodologies, and they followed those methodologies. So Abu Bakr Baqilani in Munaqabah Imam Arba, he mentions that among the Sahaba, they consider Ali Abzal Ali to be superior, period. It wasn't until later that people started saying Abu Bakr is superior. And for us, they are all superior. But you see the, the politics of things, how they how they changed to the extent that later during the time of Umar bin Abdul Aziz, actually before him, when Umar bin Abdul Aziz was a young boy when he was like nine or ten, his father sends him to study under one of the seven fuqaha of Medina Munawwara, Ubaidullah ibn Masood. Abdullah ibn Ubaidullah ibn Masood, the nephew of Abdullah ibn Masood. So he sends him there to, to study, and while he's studying, one day the topic of Ali Radhan came up, and Umar bin Abdul Aziz, he stands up and he, and he regurgitates all this propaganda he had heard. You know, Ali Radhan, he refused to take the blood, uh, revenge of the blood and of Uthman, and he did this and he did that. And his teacher, he says to him, he says, has, has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala become upset with the companions of Badr? And Umar bin Abdul Aziz was shocked. He says, was Ali in Badr? I mean, the propaganda was so strong that they'd even taken the name of Ali out of the name of those who were in Badr. And this is part of why you end up from the situation of, of this family being such so honored to now where they're going to massacre Imam Hussein al-Islam in and all of this for a few pennies for power and money and the only reason anyone wants power is money and that's it you know they sell their souls their eternity for a, for a second Not even a second. You know, a million years compared to infinity is still zero. May Allah subhanahu wa protect us. Amen. May He fill our hearts with His true love and the true love of His Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, His family, His companions, and all of those whom they love, inshallah. Those who have not made sunnah go and make sunnah, inshallah.